Liberal and Conservative MPs sparred Tuesday over bombshell allegations of Chinese interference in the 2021 election. It seems as if the Prime Minister is content to turn a blind to eye Cooper. to this interference because this interference benefited the Prime Minister and the Liberal Party. This is the same Trump-type tactics to question election results moving forward. This motion is once again a fishing expedition by conservatives. The Globe and Mail reported last week that Beijing launched a sophisticated meddling campaign to disrupt the 2021 election. Their end goal, a liberal victory, but with a minority mandate. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau insists the 2019 and 2021 election outcomes were not affected by Chinese meddling. All right, here to discuss this is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Jennifer O'Connell. We're hoping to be joined by Conservative Democratic Reform critic Michael Cooper. We just lost his connection. We're trying to get him back. And NDP House Leader Peter Julian is also here. Uh, Ms. O'Connell, Mr. Julian, thank you so much. Hopefully Mr. Cooper will be here online. Ms. O'Connell, I'd like to pick up on the comment, the clip we just played there. How is asking for an investigation into the extent of Chinese meddling and how it may have affected individual ridings Trumpian? Well, the investigation into foreign interference is not Trumpy, as you would say. It's the motion that co the conservatives bring forward. In fact, foreign interference, I've said it time and time again in the House, is persistent, is ongoing. But if you look at the conservatives and the motion in particular today, it wasn't, it's not about strengthening our democracy. It's not about making the next election even more secure. It's about looking, they want to look just at the 2021 election where they feel that it's politically advantageous to them. But what we are saying is that we have been taking measures since 2019, well, since we formed government, but since right. the 2019 election, in fact, to take measures to strengthen this. And we've talked about that there were foreign interference attempts in our elections long before even our government took office, but that they remain, that the outcome of these elections remain, um, they were decided by Canadians. And if we want to find ways to strengthen it moving forward, we're open to those ideas, but okay. that's not what the Conservatives have been proposing. Okay, well, the, the motion has been amended, as I understand, adopted unanimously by committee, and Mr. Cooper has made it. Michael Cooper, welcome to the show. Sorry about the, the technology gremlins there. Look, Mr. Cooper, while I've got you here, I, I, I want to get your assessment of how widespread you think this foreign interference is. I've heard some analysis that, you know, if this is char targeting primarily Chinese Canadians and ridings with high Chinese populations, we're talking five, six, seven ridings tops. Important, but not enough to swing the top line of an election. Is that your understanding of the scope of the ridings that may have been targeted here? Well, I don't believe the overall election was impacted, but there was interference in specific ridings that may have materially impacted the outcome in those elections. Uh, what the Globe and Mail uh, reported, uh, based upon a review of CSIS documents, is a sophisticated campaign by the Chinese Communist regime to interfere in the last election. It was directed and coordinated by Chinese Communist Party diplomats on Canadian soil. Tactics employed uh, included uh, the uh, illegal uh, flow of cash donations to candidates, disinformation uh, efforts targeted specifically at conservative candidates, uh, the use of foreign students who were hired uh, only to illegally then work for certain liberal candidates and collusion between Chinese Communist Party interference actors and certain candidates. This is very, very serious. Is it collusion, uh, though, Mr. Mr. Cooper? Connell, collusion Mr. means Connell. a very specific thing. Like some of, some of the, my read of the reporting is some of these candidates may have been assisted without knowing that there was any attempt to meddle in the election. Collusion means something quite deliberate, well, though. Is that well, the right word? Well, there was, for example, reports of cash donations and then cash returned in terms of a difference between what was uh, uh, given by way of a, a tax uh, receipt. Uh, and uh, Ms. O'Connell uh, claims that the government has been acting. Well, uh, she spoke about, uh, at committee, an ENSICOP report from 2020. Right. This is what happened in 2021, and uh, we've seen absolutely no 
evidence that the government has okay. taken this seriously. Uh, uh, it's been 18 months since the election. No arrests. Uh, the ambassador uh, fr from Beijing has not been summoned. No diplomats have been expelled. And as far as the government's uh, infrastructure that was uh, designed to protect our elections, candidates who were impacted weren't alerted, and the public was kept in the okay, dark. I've got, to the get, I've got to get Peter Julian in here. Mr. Julian, are, are you satisfied with the level of transparency we've seen from the government, and are you reassured uh, by what they're saying in terms of the steps they've taken to protect the integrity of elections? Well, I, we're very concerned about this. Obviously, we, we saw the impact in 2016 of foreign interference in, in the American election, uh, allegations around the Brexit referendum as well. These are things that Canadians should be concerned about. What Mr. Cooper neglected to say was that Conservatives were involved as well. And the Golden Mail article specifically refers to Liberal and Conservative candidates being favoured by Beijing. So we need to get to the bottom of it. I'm, I'm happy that today we came to a consensus. Uh, those ministers will be brought back, and they will have to explain, given these new revelations and this new information, uh, what they have done to ensure that Liberal and Conservative candidates are, are never uh, never given that uh, kind of support again. And, and so this is part of what the committee needs to be doing moving forward. Ms. O'Connell, I, I, you and Mr. Cooper uh, seem to be aligned on the top-level outcome of the election, was, was not impacted uh, by this. But, you know, if it's five, six, seven ridings, if you look at some of the analysis that's been done and that could be targeted, I mean, that's all the seats in Newfoundland and Labrador. That's more seats than there are in Prince Edward Island. I mean, that seems like a significant level of interference, even if it was not determinative for who gets to be prime minister at the end of the day. It sure matters to those individual MPs and candidates. Absolutely. I think if there was ever an issue that shouldn't be partisan, it's this one. You want only Canadians deciding election outcomes. And that is why we have taken steps. Now, to Mr. Julian's point, I think this committee actually has an opportunity because some of the measures we've put in place um, are new. It's the first time any government in Canada has put them in place. If there's areas to improve, I think this committee is well poised to it. But I think the other thing we need to talk about is disinformation. And I mean, it certainly doesn't help when the leader of the Conservative Party uses misogynistic hashtags uh, to spread hate among sure. women. But that's got nothing uh, so, to do with the issue so the of Chinese is interference. There's a broader right now. conversation that Canadians should have about making sure elections really are free and fair. Sure. And, and, and we support that work and look forward to the recommendations from this committee. Right. Okay. And we've talked about those hashtags on the show, but this committee is dealing specifically with the Chinese interference issue or the, the reporting on the Globe and Mail. So, Mr. Cooper, you're getting an expanded uh, committee hearing, calling back some ministers uh, uh, to deal with this. What's the, the first thing you want to see from the government to in, in, in a change or a reform that will convince you yeah. that they're taking this issue seriously? Well, I, I think a foreign agent registry would be a step in the right direction. But uh, what we need are our answers. We need transparency. We need sunlight. Uh, that was the advice the Prime Minister received from CSIS in terms of how to respond to foreign interference. And so far, he's done the opposite. Uh, he has been anything but transparent. He has refused to answer basic questions about what he knows about Beijing's interference and when he learned about it. Is it possible and he can't when, answer those, Mr. Cooper, though, because of national well, security concerns and he's being told not to say specifics because it could compromise the very activities CSIS is undertaking? He has refused to even acknowledge the issue. And as I cited, his government has taken no concrete measures in response to this sophisticated campaign of interference, notwithstanding the fact that our security and intelligence agencies were aware of it, were monitoring it at the time of the 2021 election campaign. Peter Nothing Ju was done, and that's unacceptable, and the Prime Minister has to answer. Peter Julian, what do you make of the fact that this came to light largely because of uh, unwarranted and potentially illegal leaks from inside CSIS, and, and what this could mean for Canada's relationship with its intelligence partners in the Five Eyes? Well, I, th I think the important thing here is to, to be focused on ensuring that there isn't any foreign interference. And uh, I, I think 
the information is something that is shocking to many Canadians, uh, that Liberal and Conservative uh, candidates, and we don't know how many of them were actually elected, uh, received uh, the support, they were favoured by Beijing. It's, it's something that I, I think gives pause to all Canadians. We need to ensure, because this is happening more and more, and it's not just uh, China, it, Russia, of course, has been uh, deliberately and uh, wide, in a widespread way involved in, in trying to interfere in democratic governance. Uh, as a democracy, we need to take it very seriously. And I'm happy that the committee is going to be doing these uh, these hearings uh, so that we can get to the bottom of it, get some answers, and ensure recommendations that can be put into place to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, and a final note, uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. Cochran, on, on uh, being named uh, as the as the permanent host of uh, Power and Politics. All right, well, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Julian. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much uh, for joining me and sticking with us through the technical challenges of connecting. Two and a half years after the pandemic, we're still trying to get it right sometimes. Jennifer O'Connell, Michael Cooper, Peter Julian, thank you so much. Thank you.